Okay, so we're going to continue with learning Taimah Devaira. I encourage you all to review the introduction and to go through all of the Midas, and also to email me when you use an actual Midah in your life. It's very, very important that it's not just a Limud, but that we use it out in a practical way to change our lives. We're up to Midah number five, Lehichsik La'ad Apoy. He doesn't maintain his anger forever. Zu Midah Acheres, Sha'afilu Ha'odam Masik Bechet, this is a different attribute of rachamim, of mercy. Although a person continues to sin, HaKadosh Baruch Hu does not maintain his anger. Even when he does maintain it, he does not do so forever. He lets his anger subside, even when man does not repent, as in the times of Yeravim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu restored the borders of Eretz Yisrael, even though they worshipped the idols, the calves. He was merciful towards them, even though they did not repent. So in Cain, Lomarichem, why should he have mercy on them? They didn't repent, they didn't do tshuva. Bishvil midazu ad apoy. Adiraba machlash apoy. Because of this mida, that he does not maintain his anger forever, that is why he didn't do it. To the contrary, he allows his anger to soften. Even though the sin remains, he does not punish, but he waits and has mercy. Perhaps they will repent. And therefore, he does not contend forever or keep his anger for all time. Rather, he goes ahead and he acts either softly or sternly, whichever most benefits the Bnei Yisrael. He has control, like we said, the famous saying, if everything in your tool chest, if the only tool in your tool chest is a hammer, then everything always looks like a nail. Hashem has different midas. He knows when to be stern, when to be tough. He knows when to be soft. And he uses the mida, which is letoivas Yisrael. V'zu mida ru'uya, lo'adam le'isnag ba'im chaveroi. Says the time of the Bible, this is the way that we should behave towards our fellows, fellow Jews. Even when you have the right to rebuke with punishment your friend or your children, you're right. So many times parents punish, they say, I'm right. You are right. Still, he should not, in consequence, increase his rebuke. Although he was angry, he should not maintain his anger. Rather, he should allow it to dissipate. He should not maintain his anger forever, even if the anger is permitted. For example, our sages say, Chazal say, When you see the donkey of the one that you hate stumbling beneath its load, and what is the reason for the hatred? So we know Chazal teach us, why do you hate him so much? There's a lot of reasons to hate people. And of all the reasons, Chazal tell us that you're hating him l'shem shemayim. Why? You saw him sin. And there's not two edim. So you know what, what he did wrong. You know what he's all about. And that's why you hate him. But there's no two edim. So you couldn't get him punished or you couldn't fix the wrong or whatever it was. There's no greater sin, there's, there's no greater hatred than the hatred that comes in the name of Hashem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? That's the, that's the L'Shem Shemayim. That's why they say that um, every Machlaikis, which is L'Shem Shemayim, Seifin L'Hizkayim, whenever a person is in a Machlaikis, but as soon as they start saying, I mean L'Shem Shemayim, Seifin L'Hizkayim, because even if you would, get, okay, have Rachmanis, but L'Shem Shemayim, so here, this guy, he has the greatest sinner in the world because he's hating this person in the name of Hashem, in the name of Taira. Still, still, afiluhachi omr Taira, ozoiv tazoiv imoy. Still, the Taira says, you have to help him. Very simple. And what does Chazal say on that? Shveik yas de libech, de belibach, ala mitzvah lekari bai sebe ahava, ula yoyel baderach zu, Chazal tell us that when it says Azav Tazav Imo, you have to unload with him, you have to help him. Unload what is in your heart. What are you unloading? He's unloading a donkey. And what are you unloading? The hatred that you have inside your heart. And the Torah tells, unload it. 
Let it out. Let it go. It's not helpful. But what do you mean? I saw him sin against Hashem. And he, he's getting shishi. This doesn't make any sense. And how can he go ahead and be part of a minion? And I want to throw him out of the community. And da 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 And Hashem says in the Torah, Azav Tazav Imoy. You have to help him. How do you help him? Unload what is in your heart. It's a mitzvah to draw this person close with love. Because perhaps that will help him do tshuva which is exactly the Midah of Lehech Siglad Apoy. So again, we see over here, a lot of people say, where does it come from that you should love somebody who's sinning? Here we have the Toymah Devaru, classic, right? Not, uh, not in the last few hundred years. And he says that what do you do when you hate someone because they sin? He says, oh, why do you hate him? Because he sinned. We have, we have a remedy for that. We have medicine for that. You hate him because he has a headache, give him Tylenol. What's the Tylenol? Love. So your hatred to him for sinning prevents him from doing tshuva. Your love to him might increase that he'll do tshuva. This is the part that all people really just get wrong. Because we're so into the act that we forget what the medicine is. And then we say, well, if I'm going to show him that everything's okay, why would he ever get better? But all of Chazal, we see it again and again and again, say... The medicine is someone who feels loved and is beloved will improve himself on his own and will get better. Here we have that from the time of the very Amazing. It's a mitzvah to draw him close with love. Perhaps this will help him do tshuva. So you go ahead and you think like, you know, it's like the softies. The, the, the like, you know, kalbachi, nana, chabad, softies. Hardcore, you know, has to kill him. What are you talking about? This is hardcore. This is hardcore Yiddish guy right here. You hate him because of his sin. So therefore, you do something about it. What do you do? Throw him out of town. I remember there was a meeting. They wanted to close up the park. And uh, because on 18th Avenue Park and Bar Park, Nebuch, this little Shabbos over there. So a bunch of our abundant got together to shut down the park. He said, That's not going to help anything. We have a problem. We have kids who are sinning. So we have a solution. What's the solution? I'll read it again. You're the Shatchan. Thank you very much. Shatchan is in, in the house. Unload what is in your heart. You're not unloading a donkey. You're unloading much worse than a donkey. The hatred that's in your heart is much, much more than a chamoyer. It's chamrius. Unload it. Let it go. And it's a mitzvah, a mitzvah to draw the person close with love. He said it, not me. This is not a Hallmark card. This is time of the virus. We have to we have to just again and again and again because we have in our minds that love is like this American thing and the Torah is full of hatred and throw stones. And here we have a time of the virus. Nobody argues in a time of the virus. And he says with love, it's a mitzvah. And that is going hadbek mimidais of shalakadish baruch When a person has been harmed, this is the practical. Practical. Let's get practical. When you have been harmed, whether through your honor, someone harms your honor, or your property, and you have the right and the ability to repay the, the, the guy who did this to you, okay, and, and, and Chazal tell us that the, um, he's talking about where, where you have a right to go ahead and repay somebody according to halacha, you can get him back, with harsh words, punishments, or refusing to help him in a time of need, in his time of need, he should not release, you should not release your full fury of anger. So we're talking about 99.9%. .9 when we're angry at somebody, we have no right to behave the way that we behave. We're talking here, a person in that 0.01%, halachically permissible to retaliate against the guy, with words, embarrassing him, or, or whatever it is, display of anger, according to Torah, according to Allah, a person is forced to impose justice upon the wicked. Even so, not with anger. He should not release the full fury of his anger. So not only you're right, but the Torah halachically tells you that you have a right to respond. Everybody's fighting for, I'm right, but I'm right. So the guy did something wrong to you. Most people, it's not even sure, we're not even sure if we're really right. But no, you go to Bezin and they say, you're right. And then you say, okay, now I want to respond. And they say, you're right to respond harshly. Still, halachta bedrachov, 
the halachta medrachov mitzvahs ase in the Torah not to use your full fury of anger. You should contain your anger as much as possible, limiting the intensity of your response, even if the assailant has not repaired his misdeed. When you overcome your anger against those who have sinned against you, and you deal with them with kindness, means you're repaying bad with good, with kindness, warmth, and sincerity, you awaken Hashem's merciful attribute of lehichzig lo'ad apoy. You open up this tzinar, this pipe. He does not maintain his anger forever, bringing that element of mercy into the world. You become a superhero. You can go ahead like a big rebbe, a big chacham, and you can open up a tzinar that there should be more mercy in the world. How? And this is sometimes we don't realize that if we don't have an asayin, we can't get this. Sometimes a person can get a chance at work that it's out of the normal work, but they give you a chance and you can make the amount that you make the whole year, you can make in a week. Doing something unbelievable, right? Broker of a deal and you happen to find something. Here, you can do something unbelievable. Instead of being a regular person, you can use this mida, and you're opening a valve which is unleashing more mercy into the entire world. At the very least, what you parents are doing with your kids, besides that we're hoping Be'ezus Hashem that we'll be successful, and Baruch Hashem, we're six, we, are, we are very proud, I'm very proud, and we're all very proud that we're celebrating number 103 today, Baruch Hashem. Biza Hindit and Svansig? No. Biza until a million. That besides all the, all the successes, Baruch Hashem, of being alive, and Baruch Hashem, all the successes, of kids but as a Sashem who are not on drugs anymore and not suicidal anymore and besides for all of that 103 from kids wow so besides for all of that every day you all know what this is like where you're right and you have a right and you could be right and you choose to be godly right like would you rather be right or be happy I would say would you rather be right or be godly and you're mamish all of you are heroes the way you're living your lives you're like using the mitos of Hashem on, on such a high level, it's unbelievable. Practical example. How are you doing today, Mr. Alone? Rabbi Sachs asked his neighbor. Awful, just awful, moaned Mr. Alone. I just got back from the doctor. He pulled out a fat stack of papers from his bag. You see all these reports? Nothing is going right. I have diabetes, heart problems, high blood pressure, and problems with my veins. I have to take six different pills a day, and I've also got these sores on my hand that come and go all the time. I don't know what they are, but I can't seem to get rid of them. It must be from the diabetes, suggested Rabbi Sachs. I hope you have a speedy recovery. They had met on the sidewalk outside their building, right next to the spot where Rabbi Sachs built his sukkah each year. The sukkah had always been a point of contention with Mr. Alon, who was Jewish but had no warm sentiments towards Judaism. The very sight of the sukkah on the street made his blood boil. As he passed by it, he would bang on the walls with his walking stick, frightening the children sitting inside. Rabbi Sachs would always manage to calm his children down. Poor Mr. Alone, he would say. What a pity that he does not understand how special the sukkah is. If he would just come inside one time and join us, he would be able to feel the joy of the holiday. Let's try to sing a little bit louder. Maybe he will hear it and feel inspired to join us. With that, the Sachs family would burst into song until their singing drowned out the sounds of Mr. Alone's banging and the children were no longer afraid. This was not the only confrontation that Mr. Alone had with the Sachs family. He would often blast his radio at its loudest volume on Shabbos, spoiling the atmosphere of the holy day. Nonetheless, Rabbi Sachs tried his best to maintain a friendly relationship with Mr. Alone, always greeting him kindly and inquiring after his welfare. Therefore, it was no surprise that when Mr. Alone's power went out one stormy, stormy night the following winter, he found no one better to ask for help than his hate neighbor, Rabbi Sachs. He left his freezing cold home and went downstairs to knock on the Sachs door. Rabbi Sachs welcomed him and invited him to have a seat. Mr. Alone looked around at the svarim that lined the walls. You still read those outdated books? He asked with a grunt, which may have expressed disgust, but might also have expressed regret over the lifetime of wisdom and meaning that was lost to him. The poor man had already passed through most of his life without the smallest drop of Yiddishkeit. Mrs. Sachs was busy cooking in the kitchen, but she perked up her ears so she could overhear the conversation in the other room. 
Could you please come help me get my power back on? Asked Mr. Alon. I don't even know where to start looking in the fuse box. Who should I call? What could be the problem? I always pay my bills on time. I'll come over right away, offered Rabbi Sachs. I'll bring my cell phone with me. After we see what the problem is, I'll call my friend from Chaverim. I'm sure he can find a solution. Rabbi Sachs then went, then went into the kitchen to get his cell phone. You're really going over there to help him? His wife asked with surprise. Of course, he said. Why? I don't think it's even a mitzvah to help someone like him. He blatantly desecrates Shabbos. Chal Shabbos Befehesia. He won't accept rebuke. Tell him you don't know what to do and let him stew in his own soup. Him and his power outage. He deserves it for blasting his radio on Shabbos. Mrs. Sachs had always tried to control her anger in front of the children, but this time she had lost her composure. He does whatever he can to bother us whenever possible. Now that he needs help, he comes running to us. Rabbi Sachs, with the peaceful smile that typified him, turned to her and said, You're right. You're right, dear. Every word you said is true. Even David HaMelech said, Hashem, I hate those who hate you, and I fight those who rise against you. We are allowed to hate those who deliberately sin. Nonetheless, the Torah says, Azav Tazav Imai, unload with him. Un unload your heart of hatred and help him, as the Targum Unkelis explains. I am going to fulfill this mitzvah and help a fellow Jew regardless of everything we have against him. Who knows? Perhaps this kind deed will draw him closer to Torah. As he walked up the stairs to Mr. Alon's house, he replayed in his mind his conversation with his wife and thought about the Gemara that discusses this mitzvah. The Torah tells us, if you see the donkey of your enemy buckling under its load, unload it with him. How can the Torah suggest that we might be enemies with another Jew? Asked the Gemara. Is it not permit, forbidden to hate other Jews? As it is written, Do not hate your brother in your heart. The Gemara explains that this refers to someone who saw another Jew sin, but there were no other witnesses, so he could not testify against him in court. Since this testimony ben brings no benefit, it's Lashon Hara. Although he cannot do anything against the sinner, not only is he permitted, but it's actually a mitzvah to hate him for his sin. And nonetheless, in precisely such a case, if when we're chayiv to hate someone for his sin, still, if we see the donkey of the sinful enemy stumbling beneath its burden, we are commanded to come to his aid. In this story, Rabbi Sachs exhibited the divine attribute of he does not maintain his anger forever. Source of the attribute. When a person has been offended and has every right to unleash his anger, but he controls himself and acts mercifully, he awakens Hashem's merciful attribute of he does not maintain his anger forever, to deal kindly with B'nai Yisrael, even if we are deserving of his anger. Wow. Let's try to pull this media into our lives, for our sake and for the sake of Klal Yisrael. And remember to email me when you use it at twistedparenting at AOL.com and be able to tell me this and this story happened. You could change the details if you don't want to give it away. And this way we can inspire other people to bring these meters into our lives.